the atmosphere is changing now for the spirit of the lord is here the evidence is all around that the spirit of the lord is here the atmosphere is changing now for the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around that the Spirit of the Lord is here. Overflow in this place, fill your hearts with your love. Your love surrounds us. You're the reason we came to encounter your love. Your love surrounds us.
can happen now for the spirit of the Lord is here the evidence is all around that the spirit of the Lord is here step in and I want to see your glory like Moses did flashes of light and rolls of to stay in the presence it's where I 
Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. Till I'm found Leaves the 99 And I couldn't earn it I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming Never-ending Reckless love of God Yeah
It's good to see everybody here this morning. Can I get an amen if you're excited to be here? Yeah, that's what I like to hear. Well, it seems like Sarah handled part of the greeting. <laughs> <laughs> but I uh, want to greet everybody here today. It's great to see everybody here at the well on this spring morning. We do have an opening prayer this morning. If you would join me in prayer. Dear God, thank you for bringing all of your people here this morning. Lord, thank you for bringing us safe through the week. And we pray that your guiding hand and your providence will remain over all of us as we move throughout uh, the week. We gather in your presence today with open hearts and open minds, ready to worship and praise your holy name. We ask that you bless this time of worship so that we can be uplifted and just in all of your presence, Lord. Fill us with your love and your grace, and God, help us to honor you in everything that we do. Amen. We invite you to stand, and we invite you to come up and get the streamers. You're going to want them on the first couple. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath.
praise the Lord. I'll praise you in the valley.
your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Every heart proclaim the mercy of your name on earth as it is in heaven. God, give us new every morning. Mercy is daily bread. Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we pray. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us with your hand. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Every heart proclaim the mercy of your name on earth as it is in heaven. For the kingdom is yours, the power is yours, the glory forever. Amen. And the kingdom is yours, and the power is yours, and the glory forever. Amen. Sing that again. For the kingdom is yours. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Every heart proclaim the mercy of your name on earth as it is in heaven. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Every heart proclaim the mercy of your name. seated. Would you join me in prayer? Father God, we just praise you. We praise you on the mountains. We praise you on the valleys. God, we praise you because weapon is our greatest enemy or our greatest uh, weapon against the enemy, Father God. And we just thank you so much um, that you came, that you lived, that you died, and that you rose again, Father God. We thank you for eternal life that we can have through you, with you, God. We thank you for your faithfulness. God, we pray that you would just fill this place. Lord, fill us with your glory. Fill us with your presence. God, may we be all that you've called us to be, Father God, as you've given everything to us. Lord, may we give everything to you. May we love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. God, may we live for you with every ounce of our being, Father God. Lord, we pray for those who are hurting, those who are um, dealing with, with unimaginable circumstances. God, we know that you are the God of impossibilities. You delight in impossibilities, Father. So we pray that you would move in these impossible situations. God, we pray for nations around the world who are suffering. God, those who are under attack. God, we pray for your peace. We pray that you would send your angels, God, to, to guard, to guide, to protect. Father God, we pray that you would um, bring healing to those who are in so, such desperate need of healing. Father God, you are still on the throne, and you are the God of healing. So, Father, release your healing power. God, we just praise you. Continue to provide, continue to, to guide, to direct, Lord, to lead us in the direction that you want us to go, Father God, that we would be in the center of your will. Lord God, may you just continue to move and do amazing, impossible things, Father God, as we praise you and love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Uh, every so often, the ministry directors like to give a bit of a presentation to let people know how things are going in the life of the church. And so uh, first, Mike Grove is going to come and share uh, a little bit about a recent survey that was taken and the results of that. And then after that, we'll have a bit of a financial picture. And then following that, I'll give a bit of statistical information. And, and we'll get to the children's moment long after that.
Good morning, everybody, on this beautiful Sunday. We thank God for this beautiful sunshine we have today. We haven't seen that for a few days. So as Pastor said, uh, many of you filled out the survey we recently did about the expansion of the parking lot. And after a lengthy discussion and the survey that many of you filled out, the ministry directors of the well have responded to the voices and have decided to forego proceeding with the expansion of the parking lot at Spring of Hope at the present time. The ministry directors and numerous congregants did not feel comfortable with Spring of Hope taking on an additional $200,000 mortgage when it is uncertain as to the length of time that we, the well, would be able to assist in this additional mortgage. And some were very hesitant to make such a commitment to a property that is not owned by the well. The ministry directors, we all truly believe that we have been led by the Holy Spirit in making this decision and are very, very grateful and blessed to continue our partnership with the Spring of Hope and the Brethren in Christ denomination. As I say every day, we have been so blessed to have this relationship, and we continue with that. Amen. Amen. And Penny, it's your turn. <laughs> All those who serve as ministry directors, we, we appreciate you. Um, a bit of the statistical information for the month of January, um, attendance was rather low because we had some nasty weather a few of those weekends, but the average attendance for January was 200. Looking then to the month of February, things warmed up a bit. Average attendance was 247. And then for the month of March, the average attendance was 280. Uh, much of that uptick was due to Easter, of course, with... Um, people coming for that. And um, those are neat numbers, but I don't like those kind of numbers because God is interested in butts and bucks, right? God is not so much interested into how many people are sitting in the seats or how much money is in the offering plate, but God is interested in how many lives are transformed, how many are, are changed. And so one of our goals was to see 20 and 24, to see at least um, 20 people come to Christ in this year. I know of one that, that happened this last week. Um, I heard of, from the earlier service that there are a couple other people who have come to that place. So, um, you know, 
17 more to go. Hopefully we see 117 or 517, but um, that's what we're in the business. Of. John Wesley said, we have nothing to do but save souls, right? So uh, that's what we're to be all about. Um, as far as thirst groups, um, we currently have about 75 adults who are part of those, of a group for their formation. I would say for children and for youth, probably around 40. Would you say a good guesstimation involved in an ongoing? So probably about 40% of the people we have here are in some group for spiritual formation and development. Love to see that double eventually because that's where true transformation happens as people are engaged in community. And people always wonder, the building, what's going on? Are we, are we staying here or what are we doing? And um, a former Assembly of God missionary was talking with me after the pastor's prayer thing this morning. And he's, you know, been in Ghana, been in Kenya and done lots of stuff. But he was saying, I feel the movement going is that churches are without buildings. Basically saying, and he knew a place in Ghana where hundreds and hundreds of people gathered to worship each week under a tree. I mean, they, they had no building to cling to. It was all Jesus to cling to. And God was doing amazing things. But in my own prayer time, I felt God was saying, you're here at least three years. So who knows, it might be three, might be 33, but I, I think it's a beautiful relationship that we have together. And as one prophetic word was sharing with me, we're not two separate churches in one. We are, we are one church. And so uh, we'll function together that way as the body of Christ and doing what God wants us to do. But um, my hope and yearning is that we are less and less focused on what's happening in here, but more focused on what happens out there as we continue to be in the community and, and offer Christ to, to those around us, because that's what we're all about. So may that be what we're focused on. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, well, thanks for giving us that moment to, to share a little bit. And uh, Kevin's going to come forward, and Laird, that is, um, and share children's moments. So we invite any kids to... Please come on up for a moment together. Well, good morning, everyone. Thanks for thanks for coming up. Um, this morning, I brought a photo album with me, and I wanted to share a, a few pictures in here. And I'm I'm sure you guys have photos at home, right? And you guys probably have photo albums, right? And uh, so I'm going to attempt to flip through here while holding the photo album and holding the mic. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, but you can see on the very front, that is my little man who couldn't be here today. But he was one year old, and we put him in a little basket, and we put Christmas lights around him. And uh, that was a pretty cool little photo of, of, him, uh, of him laughing. So that was good to remember by. As we go on, here's my little guy and some of his friends at a birthday party. We can see... Uh, pictures of my dog she's still she's 13 but she's still alive believe it or not so um some other some other things that are happening here here's a picture of them at del grosso's park happy birthday to my mother-in-law you've been to del grosso's I like Del Grosso's. Here are camping photos. We like to go camping. My niece caught a fish. Um, these are some Halloween decorations we put up for Halloween time at camping. Um, so what's what's the purpose of, of photos and photo albums? To keep memories, right? Yeah, we like, we like to take pictures to go back so that we can remember them. There's something that we do once a month at church to help us remember Jesus, right? Just like we go back to look at pictures to remember things, we take communion 
to help remember Jesus, right? And, and it helps us to remember how great and how awesome God is, right? It help, helps us remember uh, maybe we're, we're kind of sinful, we kind of fall short. And it's a great, ra- great way to remember Jesus on the cross and everything that he did for us. Huh? But we don't just have to do that one time a month. We should remember Jesus every day, right? Every day through our prayers, every day through um, some Bible reading, uh, the way that we treat others, right? That's a great way to remember Jesus. That's exactly right. I told my little guy that. Even at school you can pray. Absolutely. That's a great point, yeah. And we should remember Jesus because of everything he's done for us, right? He knows each one of you. He knows your names, and he loves you very much, right? So each and every day we should we should remember him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you for Jesus and everything that Jesus did for us on the cross. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, you guys go back. Thank you. We have a few announcements this morning. Just a reminder on our mission and vision, that's thirsting for the living God and offering life-giving water. Our vision is wrapped around worshiping passionately, loving deeply, and transforming lives in Jesus' name. And let us always be dedicated to those goals. And now our announcements. Um, Many people have been inspired by the Comfort GAN ministry, and some have expressed an interest on how to learn how to uh, crochet. If you're interested, please see or email Amy King with dates and times that will work for you. If you enjoy helping people in their time of need and yearn to be the hands and feet of Jesus, Uh, During a time of financial crisis, our congregation is establishing a benevolence fund, and we would love to have a team that would develop a plan on how to best help others. If you would be interested in that and serving on that team, please see or email Erica Renwick. Our next congregational meal will be held on Sunday, April 28th, following the 1030 service. You can sign up in sheets that are available in the hallway or on the entry table in the fellowship hall, and you can sign up today. Thank you. Good morning. Okay. <laughs> um, our scripture reading today is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. Please stand if you're able. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and to fellowship and to breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. And hearing that passage of scripture, it makes me say, God, do it again, huh? As they went, if you were here last weekend, 3,000 souls saved, baptized on that day of Pentecost. So the church went from 120 individuals to 3,120 individuals. And that's a good snapshot that God continues to add the ones who are saved. We want to see that. We, we earn for that. So you have a good memory? Now, has this ever happened to you that you 
pull into a supermarket parking lot or some other parking lot like Walmart, and then you, you get your items and you're focused on that and you have the things, and then you come out of the store and you have no idea where you parked. <laughs> am, am I the only one that's ever happened to you? Did, see, you're so focused on what it is you're going to do next that you somehow miss where you parked. You see, you have to take a mental snapshot of that so you remember. Statistics reveal that the average person spends 15 minutes a day searching for misplaced items. <laughs> now, I'm not quite sure about you, but um, I often misplace this. I'd like to permanently misplace this, right? Um, cell phones are frequently misplaced. Car keys, the TV remote, um, eyeglasses as well, right? Um, and um, apparently, men tend to lose their cell phones twice as frequently as what women do. I think that's probably because women tend to stick them in their purses and know where the purse is. But men, we, we just kind of put things down. And the hippocampus is the part of our brain that's really in charge of that that um, it takes that little mental picture of where something is. But sometimes we're just so distracted by other things and what's going on that we, we miss the snapshot, don't we? We, we just lose gra a grasp on that, of where things are. But if only we could continually take this mental snapshot of Jesus, for him to always be on the forefront of our minds to intentionally be focused on him. If only we had tools to help us with that. Well, perhaps we do. These early apostles, they dedicated themselves to four things. To the apostles' teaching, to prayer, to the fellowship, or the Greek words koinonia, solidarity, or the breaking of the bread. Four different things. And in case you don't know them or remember them, guess what? Over the next four weeks, we're spending on a week on each one of those. Next week, we're focused on prayer, and then we'll be looking at solidarity, koinonia, the togetherness, um, also looking to the apostles' teaching. But today, we're talking about breaking the bread. And the $100 question is, when we're told breaking of the bread, are they talking about communion, or are they talking about common meals together? Different scholars say different things. Now, as we turn to 1 Corinthians, which is a very dysfunctional church that Paul is writing to there in Corinth, there are some bad things going on as they're sharing the Lord's Supper. But with his description, we get a little bit better of a background of what's happening. Hear these words from out of 1 Corinthians 11. So then when you come together, it is, is it not the Lord's Supper you eat? It's not. For when you're eating, some of you go ahead with your own private suppers. As a result, one person remains hungry and another gets drunk. Don't you have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God by humiliating those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you? Certainly not in this matter. For I received from the Lord what I passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ and eat and drink judgment on themselves. That's why many of you are weak and sick and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. And nevertheless, we are judged in this way by the Lord. We're being disciplined so that we will not be finally condemned with the world. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you gather to eat, you should all eat together. 
So from this context in Corinth, what we see is that communion is not something that's tacked onto a worship experience of the early church. They, they actually are having an experience of that during their common meal. As they're getting together to eat in one another's homes, they go through this practice of, of having the body, the blood, the bread, the cup. So, some would say it's, it's one, it's both and. Now, there's some scholars who look at this word in the Greek. It actually doesn't mean communion. It means nourishment. Sixteen times when this phrase is used in the New Testament, it's talking about nourishment for one's body, to, to care for it. So some would say, now this is just talking about common meals that, that people have together. So which is it? Um, I really like to think it's both. That's important for us to be having meals together, eating in one another's homes as they modeled in the early church, but also important for us to be receiving the sacraments. So I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about each of those this morning. Anybody out there like to eat? That's good. That the early church, they frequently were in one another's homes having meals with each other. But there's a question for you to consider. When is the last time you had a meal with someone else from this congregation who's not your family member? Now, some might be able to say, oh, it was just last Thursday or something. But for others, maybe that's something we've never tried. And we're missing something if we don't. Because beautiful things happen around the table. Read through the Gospel of Luke and see how many times people are converted and their lives are changed when they're at the table with Jesus. Just his ministry and food seem to go side by side. Um, some of Jesus' opponents or critics would even say that he was a glutton because too often they found him eating with others in different scenarios. But whether it's Zacchaeus or whether it's uh, another Pharisee or individuals, Jesus has this way of neutralizing the scene when food is involved. Stop and think of the event that's happening on Tuesday evenings at 515. Are we calling it Bible studies in the park? No, we're calling it picnics in the park. Why? Because people are drawn to food, right? And food has this way of setting people at ease. If you come into a church for the very first time, which is scary, huh? when you don't know the people, you don't know the culture, you don't know what's happening, you know, you're not quite sure if anybody's going to say hi to you. Unfortunately, sometimes they don't. We apologize. If nobody said hi, hi, um, anybody knew? But yeah, it's a scary thing. But if suddenly you look over, oh, there's my friend, someone I know, donuts, right? My old friend Donut, he's here. And even if I don't know anybody else, I know Donut, right? So, you know, it's comforting for us. Food does set us at ease. And it's something we all have in common, right? We all need to eat. Now, there is gluttony, right? We can take food to an extreme and, and abuse it. Some do, right? But we need to recognize, hey, this is a tool God can use to help us bless other people. And um, I think for too often, the church has been known for fundraisers, right? If you just come and you eat from our whatever dinner, come and eat our fish and give us your money, right? But uh, sometimes not so much there of actually giving people food. Because, man, it's getting expensive, right? Just think how much your grocery bill has gone up in just these past few years. Um, but there are a lot of people who are at the place... You know, do I feed my family or do I pay the electric bill, right? It's a, it's challenge and tight. So the more and more we can be out there doing ministries by way of food, I think the more it's going to bless the, the lives of other people. Uh, we need to be about that. But a challenge I would give you if, if you're not in the habit of eating with other people in the faith community, other brothers and sisters in Christ, try it out. It's good. I'm, I've been intentionally in these last few months trying to eat, meet and eat with each of the ministry directors 
just one-on-one to talk about what are some ways that I can pray for them and how can I support them and which way are we going as a congregation. That's been a huge blessing for me. And I think for many of you, you'll, you'll find it a blessing as well. Now, the first group that I'm a part of, we're actually, right after this service, we're meeting at Hosses, right, to, to have our final gathering together and have a meal, a common meal together. And um, the outreach that we're having is actually a meal as well. We're going to be having a meal for the soccer players, the, the boys' soccer team at Mount Aloysius, and be serving them up next weekend, having them come here. So, yeah, food is a good thing. Don't just enjoy it for food's sake. But think, man, how is this a tool God can use for us to, to bless others and to reach others? So, so that's good about food. Um, how about communion? Let's talk about that for a few moments. That I know in Blair County, really predominantly a Roman Catholic county. And so a lot of people are steeped in Catholicism. And so the, the, the theology behind communion for those who are Roman Catholic is very different for those who are Protestants. And even among Protestants, there's a vast array of ideas about, you know, what happens during the sacrament, what is going on. Now, Roman Catholics believe in transubstantiation, which what, well, that's a big fancy word, but what it means is that the body and blood, the bread itself, the bread and the cup, literally become the body and blood of Christ. So if you're there for a Catholic Mass and you hear during the celebration of the Eucharist the, the ringing of a bell, um, that is the moment when in elements are transformed into the body, the blood of Christ. Now there are some, even a Greek Orthodox, um, the original Catholic Church, if you would, um, for one of them, it, they were so serious about the sacrament if part of the bread fell down onto the carpet, they would actually burn a hole in the carpet in that place where it landed because it was so holy, it was, it was so precious. And so I, I think that is one thing that's beautiful about Catholic theology. Yes, it, it is indeed, it's precious, it's holy, and we need to, to grasp onto that. Um, for many Lutherans, they would believe in consubstantiation. That's not that it literally becomes the body and blood of Christ, but that Jesus' presence is in that. And so that's there. For those from the Brethren in Christ background, which is Anabaptist in theology, against that, that's a broad spectrum of belief, but it's, it's really a pause to say thank you. I mean, Eucharist itself means give thanks. And on the night he gave himself up for us, the Lord Jesus gave thanks, right? And so we pause to give thanks for our Lord's sacrifice, for his laying down his life for us. It's nothing we deserve, but it's what he did for us. Now, for those who are more of a Wesleyan theology, it's more of a symbolism, that the, the bread and the juice are symbols of what Christ has done. John Wesley would say that a sacrament is an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace. So what's that mean? Well, it's something that you see on the outside, but it's really what's going on in the inside. That you see these elements, these tokens, but it's a thing God is doing within. So a lot of different ideas about communion. But um, we do need to resonate with the words of the Apostle Paul that we can't take this in an unworthy manner. And I think sometimes for people, they just go through the motions. Yep, everybody else is walking forward to get the snack. I'll go forward and get my snack too. Oh man, only a little piece of bread this time, right? But um, do we actually remember what we're doing? Somebody died so I could be forgiven. Somebody gave his life, and wow, how am I grateful for that? How am I responding to that? How is my life different because of what Jesus did for me? I know there's some pastors who they don't believe in giving altar calls, and mainly they consider every time they have communion, that's another altar call. Because every time people are coming forward, it's an opportunity of giving their lives to Christ. Of, wow, Jesus did this for me. If he died for me, I'm giving my life for him. 
So the sacrament is an opportunity for us to be filled with grace, but also to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to have that indwelling, to allow Him to come into us. Because we believe the Spirit of God is truly present here during the sacraments, that God is there. God's always there, right? But there are times when the body gathers, it's just, it's special, it's precious, and a communion is one of those times when we're recognizing our oneness with Christ, but also our oneness as a body that gathers together. Yes, we're, we're one in Christ, and He's called us to do a beautiful thing. And so we remember, we, we pause. So, you know, I mentioned earlier we're not so good at remembering things and misplacing things all the time. Uh, Jesus knew that's the way it was with His followers too. So to keep things straight a little bit, he gave them something to jog their memory. What's something they were going to see every single day? Oh, bread, right? Which in the ancient times, it wasn't just the staple for every meal. It was their silverware. As I was eating with them, way out in the wilderness of Israel, all right? And everyone sitting around eating out of a common pot. It was rice and veggies and some type of mystery meat that I'm still not quite sure what it was, right? But it was good, but you didn't have any silverware. You ripped off a piece of the bread. You used the bread to grab your rice and your meat, and then you ate it. That, it wasn't so uh, beautiful and refined, but, you know, we were eating together. And that bread was that way for the ancient world. It was, it was there all the time. So Jesus wanted this reminder of them, hey, I'm there all the time. And same way, how frequently do you drink out of a cup? Huh? You might have never thought that little plastic sippy cup for your grandchildren or, or for your children is something. Oh yeah, the cup. Jesus lifted up the cup. How often do we lift up the cup? Remember, his blood was shed for me. Jesus wanted to give the constant reminders because he knew we were so prone to forget. And so he gives us these beautiful reminders that we are his don't just go through the motions this morning as you receive the sacrament. Pause to say thank you. Pause to offer your life to Christ. Pause to invite him to save you. Pause to invite him, you to fill him with his Holy Spirit. Fill you with his Holy Spirit. That you indeed might be changed. Before we prepare for the sacrament, the choir is going to come at this time to to sing a song and remind us of the brokenness that our Lord went through, but also the, the ultimate beauty of what we have because of what He did for us.
Amen. And thanks to our Savior who paid that price. Um, we do appreciate those who are watching online with us. And uh, uh, we're going to have a time of silent confession. Uh, uh, maybe you'd like to go and grab some elements from your home. If you have those handy, you could go and grab those now so that you might celebrate the, the sacrament with us as well. But um, let's take these moments now to confess our sin. Hear these promises from Scripture. We have an advocate with God the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is uh, the payment or expiation for our sin. If we confess our sin, he's faithful, he's just, he will forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. In the name of Jesus Christ, you're forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Well, we remember that night of the Last Supper, how our Lord took bread, and he gave thanks. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples, and he said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you as often as you do this. Do so in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, took the cup, gave thanks gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you, for this is blood of the new covenant poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink this, do so in remembrance of me. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the things you do to jog our memories. These are common elements, but Lord, thank you for the mystery that they hold of what you do in them and in us. Holy Spirit, have your way. Uh, do what you yearn to do. Uh, baptize us, convict us, consecrate us for your purposes, that we might be your church, holy and penetrating uh, this community, and this county, this region. So fill us up. And Lord, we look forward to the day when we sit with you face to face and a meal together. May we never, never tire of just being amazed at your sacrifice. And may you have your way with us as we receive these elements. For all of this we pray in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Would invite those who are serving the elements to, to please come forward at this time. If you're someone who is on a gluten-free diet and would need that, there are some gluten-free wafers that are available on either side. And um, if for those who are unable to come forward, um, someone will be available to bring the sacrament to you. We would invite those in the center section to please come. And Christ, our gracious host, invites you. Come and receive him. You never change. You are the God you say you are When I'm afraid You come and still my beating heart You stay the same 
when hope is just a distant thought you take my pain and you lead me to the cross when love is this and you gave your life for me and made a way for me to know you and I upon your hands and hold the truth that when I can't you always can and standing here beneath the shadow of the cross I know the world that I keep finding open arms when love is this that you
would you please join me in the prayer following communion? It'll be on the screen. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you in unity and reverence. We thank you for the gift of communion and the bond we share in our faith. May we always remember that we are not alone, but are part of a more prominent family. May our love for you and each other draw us closer together. Guide us in our faith journey and help us remain humble and accepting of one another. May we be united in spirit, mind, and heart to honor you with our lives. Keep us in your loving embrace and let your mighty power flow through us so that our unity can be a source of strength and joy for all. Amen and amen. Please rise as you're able. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my. see with Christ to be as deep as that is even the air that we breathe uh, that constant closeness and always with us 
Oh, just a reminder immediately following the service, should you uh, be in need of prayer or maybe you're taking, making a decision to trust Jesus and not sure what step is next, people are here to talk with you and pray with you after the service, so please take advantage of that. And, and on your way out, there's a meal, a fellowship meal in two weeks, so at least make sure you're coming out for that. If, if not, line up with somebody else here, maybe go out and eat together. It'll be good for you. For, for body and soul. Receive the benediction. Go forth from this place, trusting in Christ our Savior, the true living bread, to allow us to be unified in Him and to take His message of hope to the world that desperately needs Him. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.